Hello my fellow gamers and welcome once again to Petafellows of Videos. Today I'm going to continue my let's play of Before We Leave. This game comes out on the 8th of May and here I am in episode 2 going to continue with where I left off in the previous episode and that was at the point of getting metalworking up and running. I already have an iron mine over here, taking iron from this rusting hulk. Now I have to add an iron smelter and then a tool maker. Now this requires a lot of workers and I should check do I have any. So I have 9 idle workers, so the workers are not the problem. I have tools, stone and wood, meaning that I have everything necessary. So I need to first check where can I put this building that it doesn't actually create pollution onto buildings that I have already built or fields where I grow food. At this point it looks like this spot here is the best because I can't even use these areas here because I've cordoned them off with the buildings I've already created, but later on if I want to use these areas over here they will be polluted so we'll have to actually clean them up with future technologies. So I'm going to build the smelter here and right next to it I need to make the toolsmith. Now it also produces pollution. These two pollution areas will overlap so I need to make sure to have a cleaner as soon as the technology is available for me. Currently I can't really research anything but the bridge because I only have the green type of technology. I need to actually get to the red type of technology before I can get the cleaner technology. For that I need to enable this ruined ship, but before I can get to that I need to enable this ruined generator we need to repair. I need to add a road so I can access it and then I need to repair it so it starts producing power for the future iron smelter. This iron generator and the smelter and the tool maker all use more wood, meaning that I will need to add more woodcutter huts. I have two already here and I will need to see at which point do I add a third one. Now this thing is going to create pollution on this area here so I don't wish to have any housing or food production here but since I do have some trees here I can have another woodcutter here and he will produce wood which will be spent by the ruin generator which won't be ruined once it's fixed so that wood will be available right next door. This is already finished and the iron is here so all we need is the power that the ruin generator is going to be starting to produce right about now. You can see that because of the three nearby empty tiles this generator can store more wood meaning that it's easier for it to get its resource to start producing power. Power in this game is carried, it is not transferred, it is carried by these peeps to places where it needs to be spent, so it's kind of weird that it can be packaged, but this is the universe this game plays in. So now that I have power, the iron smelter is going to be operational and I'm going to start smelting iron. As soon as that is done, I'm going to have iron and power and wood, for the toolsmith and then the toolsmith is going to start creating tools. Because that's a slow process and I'm only down to 3 tools, I'm going to use some of my remaining wood to actually create more tools faster than this way. As you can see my warehouse seems to be already full with food and these potato fields have grown plenty of food for my peeps. And I can check that up here, I can see that I have plenty of potatoes, some vegetables and some tea. So I'm ok with food, I have 24 peeps and currently I have empty spots meaning that I should add some more homes. I already have three homes here, three homes here, so I should create a new place where I will have more homes. I should see which of these places supports three. I think this area here would do nicely for that. So I'm going to add one home here, one here and one here. So with these three homes they will support 12 new peeps. I will take 12 more peeps out of the shelter and as my need for workers grows I will take the rest of them. As soon as I run out of the peeps in the shelter then I'm going to have to have a school at which they will be able to raise their children and fill the rest of these homes when I create them and that will only happen once I actually need all those extra workers. Now the ship needs a lot of tools so in order to create all of those I might actually need to get two toolsmiths but only once I have enough workers for them. Also I should have enough resources for them and to do that I should actually make another warehouse. It's excellent that it wants to fit here because if you check this tooltip here we can see that if this is built next to a warehouse and this symbolizes the warehouse this building will get additional efficiency. So not only will it get efficiency from the smelter nearby, it will get more efficiency because of the warehouse and the warehouse will be a good place to store all the stone, iron ore, iron and tools. Now while we wait for that to be built, we can see that the huts have already been built and lots more folks have inhabited my town. I now have idle workers and now I can see what else do I need to start working on. Now because more folks are now here in my town, I will probably need to produce more food. I think I cannot build it here because like I said this is area that I've cut off with all these buildings. 
So I may try to find another spot where I can add more of this. And I think this area here is also cut off because of the location of this woodcutter. Who I could move to another area. But I could also just place more farms over here. I think this tile does not actually require a road. Yep, and I can place another vegetable field here. You can see by these red arrows that the amount of food that I have is going down. Also the amount of water, I should keep an eye on this because a lot of these new homes will require a lot more water and I may need to add some new wells. But I will keep watch on that situation. The warehouse has been finished and now I need to enable which kind of materials and resources and products it is going to collect. So I'm going to allow it to take tools, wood, stone, iron and iron ore. I will not let it collect any water, tea, food because this is something that the peeps need in their warehouse over here. They do not need it over here. Now, because I have a lot of wood, a lot of tools, and a lot of stone, I can finally start repairing this ship. I can add a road here, and then click repair. It is going to take a while for all the tools to be ready, so I'll use the transmogrifier once more. Because moving a lot of those resources around, and the ship does need a lot of them, I'm actually going to start a new place where I'm going to have more peeps. And if I take a look over here, I can use this spot, which I actually placed a vegetable field on. I should not have done that. So I'm going to actually demolish this vegetable field. I had failed to notice that I had placed it in the area where there was going to be pollution. But I have just fixed that mistake and I'll move that vegetable field somewhere else where I'm going to have more homes. I'm thinking I might as well have more homes here. This spot here isn't good because I have to tear down this forest to get a road over here and move that production over here. So I'll add a new woodcutter hut here instead of the one I just destroyed and get a road through this area so I can get another hut over here. This forest will also have to go as will this one. I will now change the configuration of these roads a little bit to over here so that I can actually fit a vegetable field here which is going to get bonuses from these homes when it comes to its production levels. Now because I am going to need more water and more fields I'm going to add a well over here and another vegetable field over here. With this much food and with this much population, I should have plenty of idle workers, plenty of food for them all, and I should be able to start my next colony as soon as this ship is repaired. I can check over here just how much have I stored when it comes to iron or iron ore. You can see that the iron ore is quite faster to be gathered than the iron ore to be smelted into iron, meaning that one iron mine could actually service several iron smelters and several toolsmiths. This is something that I am going to go for because I will need a lot more tools, like I said, to supply the second colony, which isn't going to be producing tools, but which is something that I need to build in order to start getting glass. Glass is something that's very necessary in order to upgrade buildings to level 2, and a lot of these buildings can be upgraded, although you can't see what the resources are required because you haven't yet researched anything. Now, as soon as I get that second island and unlock more research options, you will see what am I talking about. The ruined ship is almost ready and as soon as more peeps enter it, it will be operational and ready to start a new colony. I do have 9 idle workers, considering that the colony ship takes 5. Going down to 4 idle workers is going to be fine for this island at this moment. If I want to increase the production rate of the iron smelter, toolsmith and the iron mine, I'm going to need more of these buildings and each of them requires 3 workers, meaning that I'm going to need to build a school if I want to increase the population, the workers and then the production. But this is something that I need to plan for, which means that I need to build that school. I just need to find a nice spot for it. And I am thinking that is going to be here. The ship is almost ready. There we go. You can see it now waiting for the crew. It takes a crew of five. And there it is. Now we can explore this planet and see what islands await us on the other side of this ocean. What you should know is that there are several islands on each planet but this, what I am finding here right now, is just one of its ice caps. So this means that we are now at the extreme north or south, but we've just found an actual island and this one is probably south considering the fact that it has deserts. And this is where I'm going to be placing my next colony. Now I just need to go around it and check just how big it is and how much fertile land it has. Because the problem with the second island, because it's on the desert island, it doesn't really have a lot of fertile land. So you have to expect that you'll be sending in food. And also you can't use too many homes here 
because you just can't keep up the population with just import, you need to have some production of food locally. I have discovered the red kind of technology here and this is the kind of technology that I'm going to need in order to go for the pollution cleaner which I mentioned earlier. Now this island seems to be quite big and there it is, the spaceship. This is something that you will be building as you advance a lot more technologies and that is the thing that you will be using to actually colonize the other planets in the solar system. This is not really something that you can use right now because you are not at the high technology level required to actually operate and repair the spaceship. So this is definitely not something that will happen in this episode. What will happen is that I will finally find the other side of this island and then be able to check the entire length and breadth of it and choose on which spot to actually start my colony. I think I'm finally going to get to that spot. There we go. So you can see that it's pretty big. I don't have to build anything close to the spaceship, like I said, because I don't have the technology to use it. I do need to find a place where I can have easy access to this red technology. And considering that this side is the only side that houses it at the moment, there's probably more of it in the middle. You could use a scout ship later on, and when you get the scout ship close to an island and click survey, it will show you the entire island. But using a colony ship like this, I can only see the edges of it. Because like I said, the ancient technology, the red kind, is here and here. I'm going to start my colony here in the middle and then be able to spread to that technology. Now let's see just where to colonize. So I'll start here and say colonize. Now I'll need to tear down these forests and get this technology as soon as possible because it is going to be a requirement for researching shipping in order to be able to connect these two colonies with ships. Now this colony comes equipped with potatoes, vegetables, tea and everything of that is necessary to start a colony but the first thing that I need to do is build homes. But I have to avoid building homes on these plots of land which have grass on them because this is where I want to build the actual wells and food production. So homes will be built on these spots where I have the desert. But uh, of course I will leave some desert for the glass production but considering the size of the desert slots on this part of the island that shouldn't be an issue. Now I'm going to pause the game while I see about planning out this area. So let's say that I have a home that is going to be connected to the road here. So let's say one home is... Well, even if I place it, I will still be using up a little bit of this fertile land for roads, which is annoying, but it's usually something that you cannot avoid. So let's say a road there. And I can have two homes here. Them being next to each other will increase the amount of peeps they can hold. And I could have another home yeah, even if I spread a road here, it will still take up some of the fertile land. But it is just something that I will have to live with. So one home here and another one will go there. So while I leave these peeps to build these homes, clear away these forests, I'm going to pop back onto the first island. But first I'm going to use Control 2 to save this camera position. And then I'll go to my original island and use Control 1. Now when I go Shift 1 or Shift 2, I will go back to those camera positions. You can see here that I have a lot of wood, tools, food, everything. So I have everything necessary to transfer over to the new colony. I just need to actually research stuff. It's going to be possible to let me do that. And that is shipping. But for that I need a red technology, which is something that I can only gather at the second colony. And here we go. I can build this last home here. I don't really actually have to yet. But I do need to build a school if I want to increase the population here. But this school is not possible to build until I have a library on this island. So an explorer's hut and a library are must as well. In order to gain access to these resources, the ancient technology quickly, I'll make a road here. I can always destroy the road and clear up this grassland for production of food later. So I'll make that road here right now. And then add a collector on this plot here and the library on this plot here. Now these homes are going to provide enough room for these first five settlers. With uh, the explorer's hut starting to be built and the ancient technology harvested, the library is going to be able to research shipping. And then the first island is going to be able to supply the second island with all of these nice resources. I should check on the food and water situation and tea, that's excellent. 
so I really do not need to do anything here, that is the beauty of this game, you can take it slow, think about your next move and leave an island doing whatever it wants. This is partially maybe not really cool because these folks seem to live forever, there is no dying and bird cycle, if you gain more settlers, more peeps, they will just keep living forever, if you just give them the school and these free slots in homes, so you will gain more population which never dies. So it's really kind of a zen game for you to build, manage the production, manage the efficiency, explore other worlds, but at this point there is no real way to lose or for them to die unless you're really bad at managing the food, which shouldn't be a problem if you follow one of my guides or tutorials which are gonna be coming out as soon as this game launches. So as I said, the second island needs some time to actually build that library and there it is. It is now getting filled with ancient technologies, when it reaches 20 I'll be able to research shipping and then this second island will start getting resources from this first one and then it will expand a lot more. Now because I think I covered a lot in this episode I'm going to stop here and thank you for watching, stay tuned for more and happy gaming!